Our last set of notes for this unit deals with the process of radioactive dating. Carbon dating is a method that um, has been used for some time to date the or to get the age of an artifact if that artifact was once living. For instance, if we had a bone, it's part of a living organism, a wooden spoon, it used to be a tree, a piece of wool, it used to be on a living animal. We can date all of those objects using this process. Now the following equation you should be familiar with can be used to do that, this ln of a over a0. And again, technically, depending on what it's talking about, it could be um, excuse me, n over n0 as well if it gives us masses of substances involved. So either one, same equation. We can do this because objects or, or excuse me, not objects, but parts of organisms that were once living are constantly, whether it's plant or animal, doing the whole respiration thing where they're giving off and taking in um, carbon constantly. And because of that, they have this continuous supply of carbon and they have a very definite amount of radioactive carbon-14 in their bodies. Whether Again, whether it's a plant or an animal, if you can think of, an, of a plant having a body, but it's a given known amount of that carbon-14. Now, when that organism dies, it's no longer undergoing respiration, so the exchange of carbon stops. Once that exchange stops, now any carbon-14 that was in that organism is going to start to decay. And using this equation, we're going to be able to figure out how long that carbon has been in that process and be able then to figure out how how long it's been at least since that organism was alive. So it says here we are taking a piece of wood from a cave dwelling in New Mexico and it's found to have a carbon-14 um, activity only 0.636 times that of wood cut today. So it wants us to estimate the age of wood and it gives us the half-life of carbon-14 as 5,730 years. So we can use the equation ln of a um, over A0, because it's talking about activity, equals negative KT. The K value, we're going to have to get the decay constant by using our equation that K is equal to 0 0.693 over the half-life, which it very nicely gave us 5,730 years. So we end up with a decay constant of 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth reciprocal years. So we now have our K value. And now it says that we have an activity now that's 0.636 times wood cut today. So remember, wood cut today should have the same activity as living wood back when this organism was alive. And we've talked about before that if it gives you a fraction of an amount that's present in one substance or in one at, at one point, then the other one must be one. And keep in mind, the bottom number is always bigger if you start getting confused about which one goes where. The 0 0.636 for the activity is going to go on top. The 1.0 for the original activity of that substance or, or organism is going to go on bottom. We just figured out that K was 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth reciprocal years. And the time elapsed then is what we're trying to find. When we take the natural log um, then of this value, we get negative 0 0.4526 is equal to negative 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth reciprocal years times time. Dividing both sides by that, then we get that time is equal to 1.73. I'm sorry. Nope. Skip down to a bottom problem. 3,740 years. So that's how old that piece of wood is. We determine that with carbon-14 dating. I think that's just really fascinating that we can do that. 
There's also a method for dating much older objects, not living ones, much older objects, and it's known as uranium lead dating. This is a type of dating we use to figure out the age of the Earth. So in this case, it says we've got a sample of uranium that has 4.64 milligrams of uranium-238 and 1.22 milligrams of lead-206, and it wants us to estimate the age of the ore. And it gives us the half-life of uranium-238 is 4.51 times 10 to the ninth years. So in this case, it's giving us amounts of and masses of the substance, so technically we should use N over N0 equals negative KT. We know we need K, might as well figure that out first, 0 0.693 over the half-life, which is 4.51 times 10 to the ninth years. So we get a decay constant for uranium-238 of 1.5366 times 10 to the minus 10th reciprocal years. So that's what's going to go into our equation. Now we have to be careful because the reason it gives us the mass of uranium and of lead is because when uranium decays, it turns into lead. We know the amount then of uranium-238 that we have now. It tells us 4.64 milligrams. The problem is we can't just add those two masses together, the 4.64 and the 1.22, because it's not, it wasn't led up to 06 back in the day. It's lost some of its mass due to the decay of the uranium. So we don't know N0 at this point. We've got to do a little side calculation for that. We know that it's going to be 1.5366 times 10 to the negative 10th reciprocal years, and we're trying to find the time that's elapsed. So let's think about it. If we want to know what N0 is, I'm going to move that, move it down just a hair so we can look at this a little better, a little bit too much. Let's move it back up. We know that now it is 1.22 milligrams of lead. But keep in mind that the mass of lead, look at what the isotope is, it's 206 lead. So when we have that 206, does it make sense that for every 206 grams of lead, there'd be 238 grams of uranium? Or for every 206 AMUs of lead, there'd be 238 AMUs of uranium. It's just the relationship between what it was, 238, and what it is now, 206. So 206 milligrams, there's a ratio of lead, would be equivalent to 238 milligrams of uranium, 238, back in the day. So when we work this out, we end up with 1.41 milligrams of uranium that, that actually turned into the lead. So this is an important value. Now, here's what people often do, and it's incorrect, so don't do this. They'll take that 1.41, and they'll put it in that bottom value. But you should be able to tell immediately that that's incorrect, because what have we already always talked about must be true about that bottom value it must be the biggest value. So that cannot be correct. Remember, right now, there's 4.64 milligrams left. So what we need to do is take that 4.64 milligrams we have now, add it to the 1.41 milligrams that, we, that was, um, ended up being changed into lead so that we know originally we had 6.05 milligrams of the uranium back a long, long time ago. So hopefully you followed that, that this is going to end up being the number of milligrams of uranium that was originally present in that rock sample, that ore that we were talking about. So now that we have this information, then it's just a matter of solving it. We take the natural log of this term. We end up with 
negative 0 0.26534. It's going to be equal to negative 1.5366 times 10 to the negative 10th reciprocal years times our time. And when we divide by that value, we end up with time being 1.73 times 10 to the 9th years. And that's the age of that ore sample.